So this is us on the first drive on Wednesday's shoot. Um, not the best day, not the best weather. So I didn't really record much of me talking on the day just because it was really windy, really wet and just not the best day for filming. But I've got some clips that I'm going to add in and maybe talk over a little bit to explain what we're doing. Here is the third drive. Um, where I only took my labs out just because as you can see the river is quite high quite fast didn't really want any spaniels going in any risk of any spaniels going in and also um, just getting across a bridge less dogs just a bit easier a bit safer, safer for them <laughs> here's Jake bringing a birdie back there's a good boy a bit of feathers in his mouth and then I use a priest just to whack them on the head when they're wounded, kill them quickly. So on this drive, I stood at the bottom by the river and hunted the dogs up the bank. I just felt like it was the safest thing to do. I didn't want the dogs going anywhere near the water that day. Sit. Sit. Good lad. Hello. I am back in my kitchen. I wanted to film a shoot day yesterday i got some clips from it but it was a little bit wet and just not great in places so i didn't film the whole day but i do have some clips we were meant to be out today but again the weather just has rained us off again so i'm hoping to video tomorrow and i'll merge it into like one one video today i am away with um two friends for a dog walk and a pub lunch so that'll be quite nice since we were all meant to be on the shoot today and we got rained off so we thought well we'll just all meet we're tough so the rain doesn't bother us <laughs> so we're just gonna meet up anyway might video some bits of that I'll probably merge in three days into like a little bit of a vlog so um you'll see some of a pheasant partridge day from yesterday some of a nice doggy day out today and then some of a shoot tomorrow so here's May and Jake, the chosen two for the day, heading into the pub. back on a shoot day again with Emily and her dogs Milo and Pip. We've got Oak, Thor, Jake, May, Alka, Emily's Pip, Emily's Milo and Colonel. This is where someone gets a really awesome reprieve and we realise the phone's on the floor. So normally at the end of the drive, I'll just let all of my dogs go. However, there wasn't very much shot on this drive, but there was a lot of birds that had come through unshot and just settled in the pen around us. Great steadiness test, but not really something that needed the rest of the team to work through the word. I just thought one dog, most experienced dog, just let her go, let her hunt it out. She's so reliable when it comes to just focusing on on birds that are have been hit 
rather than everything else sort of running around around her so it was May's time to shine here and she just picked everything that was picked and that was me telling the visitor to sit still because she was desperate to to get out hunting This is us on the last drive now. It's quite a busy drive. One of my favourite drives on this estate, to be honest. Um, there's a really thick wood behind us, which is just great for hunting the dogs through. It's my favourite kind of sweeping. Just really thick, dark wood. You can't see the dogs. Just let them go. They only appear when they've got a bird. That is just my kind of drive. Uh, out in front is where the guns are. So the trees in front of us. There's like a hill down the bottom and then the guns are lined out in front of there. So the team have to sit steady and wait. Um, you can see Emily's got Milo on a lead just to make sure he doesn't run in. If a dog is, if you're not 100% sure if the dog's going to sit steady, obviously best thing to do is just keep them on a lead until they learn not to. Mine are pretty good, don't get me wrong. They're not robots. They definitely, definitely make mistakes. Um, just the other day I had May predict that a partridge was alive i thought it wasn't and she knew better and ran in after it without me telling her to it happens they get a telling off for it regardless because they should not go unless i tell them to there might be a day where she thinks she's right but there's a car behind or that bird runs onto a road or a river unless i say go they should not go so that takes quite a bit of training I don't tend to let the young dogs go for birds um, during a drive. I just like to keep them steady. You can see I just send May for one there. Um, during this drive, I've sent quite a few dogs for different birds. I think everybody bar um, Alka. Oh, no, Alka did have one actually there. So here's Jake bringing one back. Um, Alka did have one. I think I maybe give everybody um, a runner there. There's May bringing one back too. Um but yeah, when they're young and they, they're just starting their first season, I don't let them go for runners. I just want them sitting rock steady. I want to know that these dogs are rock steady before I let them think that they can potentially pick a bird during a drive. But all these dogs now, they've had a season under the belt. Alka's the youngest, which is the Vizsla. Um, so she definitely, definitely doesn't know what is going on during a drive. She knows she's to hunt after, but she has never been sent. I actually think this drive was the first drive I've ever sent her for a runner. She achieved it beautifully. Very, very pleased with her, but I won't be giving her loads of the, this sort of retrieval at this stage. I just want her to make sure that she is rock steady while these shots are going off. The pheasant days are similar to the grouse in a sense of there's a line of beaters that are pushing the game, driving the game towards the guns. And then the guns are in a line and we're behind the guns, ready to get any wounded game. Um, the pheasant and partridges are reared game, either reared on an estate or bought in by an estate. Um, whereas the grouse are obviously wild, as we said in the grouse video. How the picking up differs is that, well, first of all, there's a lot more birds that are coming down. So on this drive, every single one of my dogs had a runner. Every single one of my dogs picked. By the end of this drive, I have a full carrier of pheasants. Um, so each, each dog gets the chance to find a retrieve, whereas 
as I mentioned in the grouse video, it's hard to get a dog who is new or inexperienced to kind of learn why we're doing it. It just takes time. It takes experience to have under their belt before they're like, ah, okay, I keep hunting and I might find something, but the ground is vast. It's sort of the same cover that they're hunting through. It's quite thick. Here, the landscape changes all the time. So I love getting to pheasant season because it kind of hypes up my younger dogs. It gives me a chance to have a bit more of a control training wise. So for example, as I mentioned, Alka had her first runner on this drive. She's been really steady last season. She's been steady so far this season. So bird comes down and it's nearby. I can see it's pricked. Send Alka, let her get it. And then obviously ask her to sit again while everybody else does it. I don't want to do it too much because otherwise if I keep doing it, she'll get overstimulated. I kind of leave that to the older dogs. Um, okay. As you can see, there's quite a few times that I'm sending dogs out. They're coming back with birds. So these are all just runners. I leave the dead birds. I don't need to pick the dead birds during the drive. Once the drive is finished, there's only one horn on pheasants. So once they blow the horn, that means guns can't shoot anymore and we're free to let the dogs go to hunt. My favorite thing about pheasants is that every drive is different. Every estate is different. So, you know, we've got woodland, we've got crop, we've got rivers, um, everything just looks so different even from estate to estate the drives within each estate i just find it a lot more scenic um whereas the grouse for me i don't know if it's because i also live on top of a fell but i just feel like it's a little bit boring sometimes in a sense of everything kind of looks the same a lot of grouse keepers would probably tell me off for that especially my husband but I personally just love the environment that we do the pheasants in. Um, I love the woodland because I personally, if I'm going to go walking my dogs, that's where I would head to anyway. But I just really enjoy it. I enjoy that everything is a little bit different. By the time the grouse is finished, I am so ready for pheasants. I want a change of scenery. I want the dogs to have more of a reward. They've just hunted hard for not really very much and further to the end of the grouse season the grouse gets so smart and the weather gets worse it's just so refreshing to hit the pheasants give every dog a retrieve sometimes at the end of a drive as well if i've noticed a few dead around me i'll hold the older dogs back and just give a young dog a confidence boost by being like there's a bird just down there i'm gonna send you to it then they get their bird and they're happy. They've they've had the retrieve. It's just great for confidence boosting after probably not a huge amount of success on the grouse because they're competing with such a large amount of other dogs for me. So this is the end of the drive here and I've just sent all of my dogs away. Um, But yeah, they're kind of competing against the other dogs whereas there's not, there's still the competition there but there's there's more birds, there's more opportunity for them to win. You can see my carrier is full. I'm struggling to lift it. So that was kind of a bit of a different vlog. I kind of merged three days into one. Um, I quite liked that actually. I found that it was probably better to do my job and video um, because you've kind of got to be a little bit more on it with the pheasants. There's a lot more birds coming over you. Um, you've got to be a little bit more aware and watch everything that comes over to make sure that they're not hit. Also, at the moment, um, one of the estates that I'm on is purely shooting steel. So this has come into place um, to try and make eating game more of a thing, basically. Um, I don't really know the full facts of it, if I'm being completely honest. I just know that it's kind of the way that the industry is going, that they want everyone to shoot steel shot. Um, it's meant to be better for putting the birds in the food chain. But what I will say is, it does not kill game like lead. <laughs> um, there's a lot of birds at the moment on the estate that I'm on that shoot steel getting pricked and flying on for, for a good distance. Um, I'm not afraid to say that. I think that that is me being honest about what I've witnessed. For me, I'm not a fan. Um, I think 
it's more important to make sure that birds are killed effectively or um, brought down to a point where we can get them. The difficult part of the um, pheasants and partridge, the way that it's laid out, is that your dog isn't going to go, you know, you, to, in order to pick a bird that's miles out, it might be crossing through a woodland and then hit a fence and then have to jump over that and then have to keep going. Um, there's a lot more obstacles. For example, if I was in a field that then backed onto a river that then they would have had to go up a bank, over a road, into a pen and then up a woodland to get to these birds. I obviously went through to that pen and there was a picker up in that pen as well. Um, but they were just going for miles and it's it's not really nice to see. So I'll be honest and say that, that I'm not a fan of what this seal shot is doing at the moment. Um, I've seen it firsthand just not bringing birds down. Um, so yeah, I was concentrating quite a bit just to make sure that I was on it really, um, which you, you have to do with pheasants anyway. As I said, there's more birds coming over. So I think it was better to just prop the video up let it roll away. I mean, that most of them were like 40, 50 minutes long. So I cropped them down and sped them up. Um, but hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. And um, my voiceover kind of give a bit of a description. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping to video some more and it might change. I might be able to sort of speak a little bit more depending on how the days are run in between drives but probably during a drive it will just be a case of i'll prop my phone up at the beginning and then i'll concentrate on what's happening um but yeah hopefully you guys still enjoyed it